Hey, what's good everybody and welcome back to the Earlham Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA 14. This is John Jay Gaming on the mic and today we have our very first game in this series, man. We are taking on the Northwestern Wildcats. They have a B minus B, B minus overall, whereas we're actually F's across the board and unsurprisingly, Kirk Herdstreet, they're rocking with them. But that being said, no, we're not afraid of these guys. We've been waiting so long to bring our college football program back. And we're going to do it in great fashion. So I can't wait to get into this game. And if you're excited about it as well, make sure you smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you had to be brand new to the channel. And like what you see as well. Now, one thing that I wanted to mention before I get into this game and something that i actually forgot to mention in the previous episode was these are the sliders that i'm going to be working with throughout the entirety of this series going to be having seven minute quarters obviously on heisman with the 25 min speed threshold and then for game rules as well as the other sliders um these are all based on jade kits so this is what we're going to be rocking with in terms of penalties and then these are my sliders you know for both on the user side of the house as well as on the cpu side of the house so these are supposed to be the most difficult but also most realistic sliders in the ncaa community so of course i'm going to be rocking with that with that being said though let's go ahead and take on the wildcats from Northwestern University. Let's get it. All right, man, so our very first game in over a decade, we're here at home, and we're on defense. Time to make a statement. Here is Kenny Dorman laying the lumber. That's what I love to see, man. And we got him to a third and five already. We can get these guys off the field, get a free and out. You never know, man. Even though we're a heavy underdog, this is a team playing with some fire. Although Chris Walker, he got the catch for seven yards, though, so you hate to see it. That being said, though, defense not playing too terribly bad right now. Just got to avoid the big play. Make them earn it as Gary Rucker goes right down the gut and picks up 17. That's stuff that we have to avoid. Got to try to clog those running lanes. Make them earn the touchdowns that they're going to earn because i'm trust me there's probably going to be quite a few as our line is either a linebacker or our safety still trying to get to know the team a little bit get stiffed on by the quarterback that's certainly not a good look whatsoever as stewart almost gets it into the end zone himself he is brought down from behind as we got him to the second and goal now gonna try to force him we completely miss we had the play we had it we are going to get them for a loss, and we miss. And that's how Northwestern, they get their first touchdown of this series. As the extra points up, it's wide right. I've never seen a miss this badly. I didn't think it was the uh, sliders that did it. Um, I've never seen that before in NCAA, but hey, it is what it is. But Georgia, they avoid a narrow upset of Missouri. So they go 1-0 in their opener. As we try to get something going on offense as well. Patton going to run for his life. Picks up the first down. A 16-yard rush is how we get our first first down of this series, man. Let's see if we can get a rhythm on offense. So as Patton will try to throw to right-hand side. Finds his tight end, Adam Pitts, on the outside for a 14-yard gain. Nice job on the play action. Offense is not looking too bad. Let's see if we can get something to our receivers, though. As Patton will throw again to the left. Tight coverage. Miami Thomas, though, coming through with the catch. You'll love to see it. A 14-yard gain. And we're in Northwestern territory as we throw again over the middle. This time we have John Evans, who's listed as a fullback, but he can also come in and play wide receiver as well if he needs to. As we got third and long again, got to try to get something happen here. We had a wide open lane to work with, but... Aaron Ball had the stop and terrain Patton 
is hurt. So the backup quarterback, he has to come in, tries to make something shake here. Lewis has to let this one go early before St. Fallhem can make his break. And it's going to cost us as we turn it over on downs in what was a promising series for us. It ends for a turnover on downs, but we can definitely build off that series, man. At least it wasn't a free and out. So you got to, you know, enjoy that while we can. As they go over the middle, we actually force an incompletion. So you'll love to see it. As now we got second and ten now. Let's see how our defense can respond. Play action by Davis, who breaks one tackle, breaks two. And is finally forced out of bounds, but not for a six-yard gain. We were there to make the play, but again, not a lot of talent on those squad. We need a lot of help, you know, to get it going here on the defensive side of the ball. As they got third and long here, Stewart. Going to throw to right-hand side. Gets it to Holloway. Easy catch, and he's down the sideline, too. Can Hill catch him? No. Touchdown, Northwestern. And Brent Holloway takes this one to the crib, man. And it's so unfortunate. We were there to make the play once again, but you know, couldn't make the tackle. And he was able to take it to the outside as well. That broken tackle sealed the deal. So... Now we're down 13 to nothing, but it's not a complete blowout yet, so you love to see it. As we'll go ahead, run the read option. That goes well for us. A 10-yard gain. That's our one of our bigger rushes of the day. As we'll try again with third and inches. Going to try to run for it on first down. Patton taking it up the middle, taking some shots as well. He gets another first down. You know, this Michigan offense is not something that I'm used to running. It's going to be really interesting in this series how that turns out. We try to throw over the middle. Get it to St. Valham for his first catch. It's a six-yard gain. As that's going to take us to the end of the first quarter, man. And one of what we're seeing overall, even though we're down 13 to nothing, we've got to clean things up on the defensive side of the ball and execute on Northwestern side of the field. So let's go, man. Another quarter of underway. We're facing a third down. Going to try to get it out. No, we're going to Henry B. York instead. They had the halfback option red, but Henry B. York was open for us, and that's a first down for the Quakers. As we go over in the middle, find Miami Thomas, who takes a massive shot as well. He got his second catch already. As Terrell Patton, he's perfect so far on the day, but it's almost ruined. His first incompletion of the day almost became an interception. And so thanks to that, Terran Patton no longer pern as Aaron Ball gets it out on the screen. Had to stop to make the catch, and that could have cost us six points, but still got the first down regardless. As we got first and ten, Patton going to try to toss it to the right-hand side. Got very fortunate. Adam Pitts winning that one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. Nearly a first down. He's got second and inches now. Patton looking around. Going to try to throw it short to St. Fallham, who gets the first down. Only a one-yard gain, though. We got a goal line situation for the first time. Can we punch it in the end zone, though? Third and goal. We had Miami Thomas on the outside, but we couldn't connect. We overthrew him. So fourth and goal, coach wants us to go for it. We're going to go ahead and try to. Aaron Ball gets stuffed at the line, though. He didn't have a chance. So another turnover on downs for Earlham. As we now have to try to come up with some kind of response on the defensive end. Granted, we do at the very least have them pinned down at the one-yard line. As we try to get them, it's duty engage. Eight thing, but that still doesn't work out for us. Rooker broke three tackles. And now only Robert Quinn is in the way. Can he make the stop? It, the tackle doesn't register. He almost gets to the end zone. It's a 91-yard run. Pretty sure that's an NCAA record, though. But it, even though it's not an end zone for a touchdown, it's still a score for Northwestern. You hate to see it, man. They literally started on the one-yard line, and they just were able to march down the field without any sort of problem whatsoever. As they miss another extra point. Wow, this kicker is just straight up terrible. I don't know what else to say. I've never seen this before. Granted, this is with the Jake hit sliders that I'm running. So definitely uh, interesting to see as we try to throw to the outside. 
that's incomplete but despite those two extra points we still find ourselves down 19 to nothing as Patton will drop back to pass again gets it out to Miami Thomas surprised he didn't call the face mask that would have really helped us out he's gonna take it slow and steady as we need just one more yard here Patton gonna try to fake it gonna go to the outside with Aaron Ball He's going to be just short of the marker. We cannot do anything with this running game, but we're certainly trying, though. On this fourth and one, we're going to go ahead and go for it. You got to risk it for the biscuit as John Evans picks up the first down. We'll keep this drive going, though. Let's go. A couple plays later now. Patton looking around. Going to try to throw it over the middle, but it's intercepted. We had him for a split second, but the linebacker breaks on the ball. It's honestly just a great play. He was open, but Tyrone Cade closes it out. And Northwestern, they get another possession to work with. This time, they start on our side of the field and make us pay dearly. As it honestly wasn't even terrible coverage. We It was just one of those things where... Our DBs simply aren't fast enough to keep up with some of the speed that these receivers had, and it showed here. As now it's starting to get really ugly. I'm not surprised here. Honestly, if this is one of those episodes where it becomes a doubleheader, we might have quite a few doubleheaders throughout the course of this season. To get through season one, it's possible! It's Chris Walker finds the end zone down as well. And we're down 32 to nothing already. And we're not even done with the first half yet. That's the sad part. So we got 50 seconds left. Let's see if we can at least get something on the board here before we go into the halftime break. At least get something on the board. As right now we got second and five. We still have three timeouts to work with. Patton going to send it though. He nearly gets intercepted. He was looking for St. Valhelm. It's incomplete. And now we got third and five coming up here. Just going to try to run some slants in order to pick up the first down. Find Miami Thomas right over the middle. He nearly gets to midfield, though. First down for Arlem. And the Quakers are going to get to the line of scrimmage quickly, trying to pick up this first down as fast as we can. Get it to Henry B. York. He doesn't get to the first down marker, though. We have to call a timeout. We got second and inches now coming up, though. Patton. Looking around, going to throw it short again to Aaron Ball, who gets lit up like a Christmas tree. But picks up the first down, though, at the very least. He already has five catches. We're trying our best to get him involved in this offense as much as we can. So we're trying to throw over the middle. Dangerous play. Facing pressure, really sped up the clock. And it really showed there. As now we got third and long here. See if we can pick up another first down for us. Patton. Looking over the middle, finds Miami Thomas. He's going to get into the end zone. Touchdown, Earlham. And the first touchdown for us in this series goes from Taron Patton to Miami Thomas. He just jukes the shoes out of 39. And we get a little bit of positive momentum at the very least. 32 to 7 going into halftime. Let's see if we can play a little better in the second half, though. They've got nothing to lose. All right, so here we go. First and 10 coming up here. Taron Patton going to drop back to pass. Going to throw over the middle. Finds Henry B. York. Beautiful throw right up the seam. Good for 32 yards. That's exactly what we need to do, man. Just have plays like that. Just got to chip away at this league. Can't do it all in one false stroke as Henry B. York again. Another 23 yards. He's having a good day. Four catches for 81 we got a couple plays later now. Going to try to get out of the pocket. And we get sacked in the backfield. 10-yard sack. And now third and long coming up here. Got to Lisa pick up some yards here to make it more manageable. Fourth down, but we get intercepted and said. I was trying to throw for A, and even though it was a tight hole, that was a makeable throw, but it was way off target. And it led to that interception right there. So Northwestern. They get the ball back once again, and once more, an opportunity for Earlham to score, and we squabble it. That's already the second time that we actually, yeah, is there our second or the third time that we messed up on it? This game could have easily be a lot closer right now, but again, just the lack of execution on offense really showing on the scoreboard right now, and it's a lot bigger lead as a result of that versus what it should be. 
as we're just now hoping that our defense can make some kind of stops. Stewart, though, he's able to get loose. He breaks the tackle. He gets it into Earlham territory, though. And they're driving deep in already inside the 40. Rucker taking it to the outside. He's brought down from behind by 92. A six-yard gain on the play is now second and four coming up. Stewart making some changes at the line of scrimmage, though. Throws it over the middle to Holloway. And he nearly gets it into the end zone if it wasn't for that horse collar tackle, which, you know, they never call in this game. It would have been easily six points, but they're driving ever closer. Basically a second and goal now. And it just shows like a lot of work that needs to be done in order to build a successful college football program. As Stewart again drops back. He's looking around. Froze the right hand side. Gets it to Rucker. And we actually force the fourth down. We'll see if they'll go for it. And they decidingly, surprisingly, choose not to. So we force him to a field goal at the very least. But now we got to get some points on the offensive side of the ball. Otherwise, you know, this is one of those games that could still easily get out of hand as we're just hoping that we can execute better on offense this time around. Going to throw it over to Miami Thomas. He makes the tough grab. What's great about this, these receivers, man, even though the J-Kid sliders make it more difficult for tough catches to happen, they haven't had any drops yet here today as Taron Patton going to scramble to the outside. He gets it to midfield, but he fumbles it. And it was going to fumble out of bounds, but... The Northwestern defense, they were able to pick it up right before that moment happens. Just a terrible stroke of luck. We almost made it to the out-of-bounds marker. You hate to see it in another drive where Northwestern gets some great field position to work with as well. And it's going to show here. Chris Walker already taken to the outside. He gets a 15-yard gain on the play. It's now first and 10. Stewart dropping back, throwing over the middle to Walker. For a six yard game. He took a shot though. So let's see what we can do on this next play. Second and four now. Gonna try to send a little bit of a blitz. They do run it. We were in the backfield. You just can't make a tackle. You gotta finish up the plays. You're there. The the idea is there, just not the execution of it. And it's shown in this game, man. As we try to go, Doman making a great tackle up from the safety position. That's the only custom recruit. On the defensive side of the ball. And I'll tell you what. If they score on this possession. I think I'm just going to go ahead and sim out. It is not looking good for us whatsoever. As they throw it. Yeah we're out. Alright man. So checking out what went down here today. You know Northwestern. They didn't have like the quote unquote. Huge quarter for saying. But that being said though. You know they did exactly what they were supposed to do. They. Yo, know, they beat her ass. I mean, nothing else really to say. Yo, know, they really did what they needed to do to take care of business. We did score, so that's a positive sign, but, you know, not really too much happening there, though. Checking out the stats for our guys to start this game, and Tremaine Patton, he did get the starts for us, you know, and he had a pretty solid day, all things considered. He was 24 for 37, 267 yards. Even had a touchdown, did have those two interceptions, though, but... Having a 64% completion percentage in the rain, given the, what he's working with, that's pretty solid. Our backup quarterback, Matt Lewis, also came in to play as well. He was one for five, um, Got even got sacked once. Didn't have a single yard passing, by the way. Um, you know, he came in as a backup because Tremaine Patton, he got hurt a little bit. And when we put him in the fourth quarter, you know, he really couldn't do anything. Speaking of guys that couldn't do much, though, <coughs> we had Aaron Ball. We actually really tried to get him going on the running game, but we just couldn't run on this Northwestern defense, man. We had negative two yards rushing with Aaron Ball, and he was our, you know, he had the most carries among all of us, but obviously didn't have the most yards. That was for main pattern. He had... Eight carries for 24 yards, including a long of 16. He did fumble the ball, though, which is really unfortunate. And it was a lost fumble on top of that, so that's tough to swallow. John Evans had a couple of carries for 13 yards. And then 
Michael Mason, our backup tailback, he had a carry for four yards as well. Now, surprisingly in this game, we actually didn't have any drops and the receivers actually played pretty well, all things considered. Miami Thomas, the son of St. Thomas legend Isaiah Thomas, he had the, probably the best game out of everybody. Eight catches for 106 yards and a touchdown, so that's a really good sign to see. Aaron Ball had the only drop, but he had six catches for 29 yards. Again, we really try to get him involved as much as possible. Henry B. York, he had four for 81. And St. Vaughn, him, the other custom recruit on the squad, he had three catches that went for a whopping 11 yards. Defensively, we had some guys give up some blocks. Alvin Wilson gave up a sack. And then Jay Downing probably had the worst game out of everybody on that defensive line. He actually gave up two sacks in the game. And then defensively, it was a rough day for our defense, but there is a bright spot to look at. Kaden Dolman made some plays out there on the defensive side of the field. He led the team in tackles today with nine total tackles, with cornerback Josh Hill not too far behind. We also had a couple of TFLs with Justin White and Matt Reed able to get into the backfield. Fortunately, we couldn't get any sacks and we couldn't get any interceptions, and that's something that we needed to work on. All right, man, so that first game that we had did not go very well for us. But that being said, I wanted more smoke in this episode. We're going to have probably quite a few double hells this season, and this is going to be one of them. We go into Death Valley for the second part of this double header. So again, if you're enjoying this series so far, man, make sure you smash that like button as well as hit subscribe. You have to be brand new. Let's go ahead and take on the Clemson Tigers in the ACC. Let's get it all right so we saw how we played against you know a power five team at home but i'm really curious now to see how we play against another team on the road is one of the first plays of the game that's not how we wanted to do it death valley not treating us well whatsoever as we get beat deep by casey robinson and again you know the coverage you know was not too bad you know we just couldn't get to this quarterback and the dv just couldn't Keep up, you know, just got to work on getting some more athletic guys, trying to get some more speed here as soon as possible as Clemson opens up with a 7 nothing lead. And what's worse for us is that we went free and out, not only on this past possession, but on the first possession as well. So it's been all Clemson so far, the Death Valley experience. You know, you hate to see it, you know, it's just straight up not having a good time as they're able to break another run on the outside, even when we guess run. Because we know we're not very good to run. We have to go up and, you know, try to, you know, guess run a little bit more often. But it leaves us more open to the pass, which thankfully that one was incomplete. I'm actually wasn't sure who he was trying to throw it to necessarily. But he did throw it that way. As now second and ten good trying to get make it to the end zone. And we keep him out of the end zone just a little bit longer. Third and two now. Let's see if we can get this goal line stand though. Come on, boys. Payne was there and I'm surprised they didn't call that a touchdown but it won't matter because they're going for it here and Payne's going to be able to walk up in there touchdown it's Clemson and an early 14 to nothing lead here and you can tell our, our uh, all, basically all freshman team is straight up rattled right now can't even tell which buttons are right now and it's showing as we haven't really been able to get a first down on offense so far. Let's we'll see if this be the first one as Aaron Ball breaks the tackle. Okay, Aaron. First down, baby. Let's go. Okay. Well, now let's see if we can get another first down. Just got to take it slow and steady. We don't need to go very fast on offense. We throw it to Miami Thomas. He gets open for an 11-yard gain. Takes a couple of shots, too, in the process. But he gets his first catch of the day as well. As we try to throw again on first down, this time getting it to one of the defensive backs, Jared Crosby, and he picks up 13 yards as well. He's able to make the catch. As part of the reason why we have this lack of depth, we have to use other receivers. And again, another promising drive gets spoiled by a turnover. Just not a great decision by Terrence Patton right now, man. Yeah, you hate to see it. You know, and now Clemson, they have control of the football once again. Already up 14 to nothing as Payne. Going to try to take it to the outside. He breaks multiple tackles. And now he has a convoy. He's going to be gone. 
like a girl in a country song. Touchdown, Tigers. And we are not even done the first quarter. And they're already blowing us out more than Northwestern did. Not a good sign. We had multiple guys ready to make the tackle, but they just couldn't get it done. And after another three and out, this is what's definitely not helping. We're not even getting any first down. So our defense doesn't get any rest. It's just a recipe for absolute disaster. And it's just unfolding live. And that's part of the reason why we're probably going to have at least a handful of double headers here. Because let me tell you, games are going to get ugly throughout the course of the season. Especially if we're playing like this right now. We can't even stop a nosebleed. Like, I have seen Kleenexes made by Sharman that are tougher than our defense right now. And it's another touchdown for Clemson. Anthony Payne gets in there. It's already 28 to nothing. And mercilessly, we do make it to the end of the first quarter. They somehow missed the extra point. I even simmed it, and they missed the extra point. So that was a little bit odd. But that being said, we are now up to, down 27 to nothing. And we're just hoping we can get something from our offense right now. And that's not what I was looking for. What I said I was looking for something from our offense. Another turnover was not what I was looking for whatsoever. Terrain Patton with his second interception in this game against Clemson. It's just not a good decision. Didn't see the safety. And it was an easy turnover for Espinoza. And with Clemson already with a prolific offense. They get great field position again. They already start off in field goal range. And what's not going to help either is the penalties. They're going to call us for this face mask, and we get caught for it. And so that's going to give them another 15 yards on top of that. So now it's just a first and basically a first and goal at this point. The first down marker is basically right next to the end zone as Blair almost makes it in there. Just a couple of yards shy. We get to see them running back though. Third and two coming up here. Moving Blair over to the right hand side. But it's not a run though. Robinson going to run the opposite way and get to the end zone too. Another touchdown for Clemson. And it's 34 to nothing already. And once again, we find ourselves in a familiar spot. Just trying to get some offense going so that we can go into halftime and not be blown out here. As Patton looking to go around, going to try to throw his thing. DP had pits, but he overthrows him, which is ironic because our quarterback can't throw the ball very far. And he gets picked off once again by Espinoza. But thankfully, we're going to get lucky this time around, and we don't allow any points somehow. So we get very fortunate that this lead didn't grow any bigger as Patton will try again. This time he has a wide open man in Henry B. York. And he gets us across the 50-yard line. 37-yard catch, our biggest of the day. And the Earlham offense is in business. Second and 10. Throwing to Miami Thomas. He picks up a few yards. And we also call a timeout as well. Five-yard gain on the play. Let's see if we can keep moving the ball downfield. Third and five now. Throwing to the right-hand side, gets it to Henry B. York, who makes the grab and gets us out of bounds as well, saving the timeout for right now. And it takes us to a point where we have one play left here in the first half. Going to throw a Hail Mary, and we get Jared Crosby in the end zone. Touchdown, Earlham. What a grab right there. Like, look at this catch. Contested end zone, and our guy comes down with it. So we will not be shut out. But things do not get much better for us here as we actually lose the scoreboard. It's like, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. It must be like a scoreboard glitch. But we're still down um, 34-7, to I think, as we're here in the second half now. As we try to make something happen here, we do. I don't even know what I was thinking. I don't even know what's going on here. It's just, we're just going to sim out. This is not going to end well, is it? Are you kidding me? So no surprises here, but Clemson also destroyed us out there on the football field. This time mostly doing it in the first quarter, and that's just the reality, man. I mean, these guys do indeed play hard for us, but at the same time, though, it's one of those things where, you know, we just don't have the horses to really compete with anybody, so I wouldn't be shocked if there's too many um, double headers in Season 1 um, so that we can get new players in our program as soon as possible because we can only go up from here.
Checking out the stats for the second half of this double header though. And Terrain Patton, man, had a tough day. 15 for 37, 192 yards, had a touchdown, and threw four interceptions. Definitely a rough day for the young freshman quarterback. On the ground game, it wasn't, it was actually even worse somehow. We had negative rushing yards, so not really too much to say here. Receiving yards, though, we had two drops, both by Henry B. York, but Jared Crosby, who's our free safety, I don't think he even is a starting safety for us. He might be the backup. He got the only passing touchdown of the day, and he had two catches for 31 yards. Blocking, we gave up three sacks once again with Alvin Wilson being uh, committed, as well as Jay Downing and Jesse Landry. Defensively, Joey Martin had a great performance. He had 13 tackles on the day with Matt Reed, also with double-digit tackles on top of that. We did get to this quarterback as well. Andrew Smith had a sack for us as well, which is really nice to see. And then we had a forced fumble by Anthony Anthony, as well as a fumble recovery. A field goal and punt block and a defensive touchdown so Anthony Anthony also coming out here and making a difference on special teams and stuff like that and that led to our second touchdown all right guys so you know what it wasn't gonna be easy and we knew that from the get-go two games in this episode two blowout losses we gotta keep our chin up and keep rolling here this next game we start Mac conference play we take on Transylvania was well, probably the most likely game that we win this season they're actually have similar ratings than we do uh, but we certainly got some work to do about Transylvania they have had an even rougher time than we have they have not even scored yet this season and our goal is to keep it that way as we continue to move forward in our first season the FBS it's gonna be a good one though so make sure you smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you do happen to be brand new and like what you see here on the channel as well. This is John Shea Game on the Mic signing off, but hoping that you all are out there having a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.